Welcome to the complete tutorial for setting up your Rolo printer with GoToLister. It's a very simple process. So the reason why I love Rolo is it's compatible with UPS labels, which are free. I'll link a video below on how to get UPS labels free for life. Other printers have issues with UPS labels. The Rolo does not. The Rolo is a thermal printer, which means you never have to pay for ink. So you get free labels. You never have to pay for ink. And historically, from all the users of Rolo versus Dymo, Dymo generally has a lot more complaints from their user base. So that's why this is the preferred printer for GoToLister. It's also compatible with very cheap labels, which I will also link below. Whereas my Dymo, which I purchased the other day, which is slightly cheaper than the Rolo, only allows you to use Dymo labels, which can really add up over time. This is a Dymo 550. They changed some technology to make it not compatible with the labels I used to love to use that I recommend to people. So now we'll be going over how to use the Rolo. So the first thing you want to do is open up the box and you will have this charger here. Go ahead and plug this piece in. That's the only thing you have to do in terms of uh, putting things together. And then we are going to plug this in to the back here of this Rolo printer, just like that. And that is going to give it power. So we will also plug this in and we are good to go. I do recommend using, a, go ahead and purchase a Rolo uh, label holder for the labels you'll be using. Currently I'm using the Dymo printer as the label holder. So I do recommend purchase. It's like 15, 17 bucks for that. I'll also link that below. And what you want to do now is you want to make sure the labels are lined up correctly. So you'll see that there's these blue tong looking things. What you want to do is center them and you want to put the label smack dab in the middle and bring these right until they're flush. You don't want it squeezing the label at all but get it right there and then we will close that. We're not going to insert these yet. And before we proceed, let's make sure that we connect to our computer. So you're going to plug this part into the back right next to that charging port. We'll get that plugged in. And then we will connect this to our computer. Your computer should have a USB port just connected in there. And now we're going to make sure that our drivers are set up. Technically, the instructions say don't connect it to your computer first. So we can unconnect it. We can turn it off, unplug it. And for your first go around, you are going to go to rollo.com forward slash setup. And I want you to watch these two videos here. We have the wired printer, which I recommend the wireless printer is an extra hundred dollars and i just frankly don't think it's worth a hundred extra dollars to not have to deal with wires i like wires they're generally more reliable than wi-fi connection so step one watch the intro video it's going to reiterate some of the things i said but it's important to watch that video and step two you're going to install the drivers so if you have a mac be sure to watch the mac video if you have a windows be sure to watch the windows video we're gonna go ahead and download this driver. It is a very fast download, so we'll click on that. It's gonna open up this folder here automatically for you. And then what you're gonna do is click on app this Rolo printer's driver. You're gonna right click it and click on open. It's gonna ask you if you wanna extract all or run. We're gonna go ahead and click on run. Again, this is also reiterated in the Dymo videos, so be sure to watch those. We're going to click on install anyway, click yes on whatever prompts show up on your computer, click on next, install, next, finish, and we are good to go. Now we're going to open up our control panel. This is for Windows users, but the equivalent for Mac. Uh, it should be pretty similar. So we're going to go to the control panel and we're going to type in printers. Go to printers and scanners, open this up, and we're going to find the Rolo printer. Now it's time to connect it, otherwise it will not show up. So connect it in there, and it should show up here. 
So you can just go to control panel, go to start, type in control panel, click on control panel, go to hardware and sound, and then click on view devices and printers. Find the Rolo printer. We're gonna right click this and go to printer preferences. You actually don't even have to do this, but if you want, you can, I like to make the density 12. That's just gonna make sure the label has a nice bold, uh, not ink, but thermal etch. So it's not like a wimpy looking label when it prints. And for now we can keep the speed at four, but if you ever feel like it's going too slow, feel free to increase that. I don't want to increase the speed too much because I think it may slow it down and then leave everything else the same. Click on okay. Now we are going to go to go to lister.com and sign into your account. Once you sign into your account, go to printer settings. Under Rolo printer, so un under default printer, select Rolo printer. For the label size, we are going to select, in this case, I'm using 30334 label. So it says Dymo 30334. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. These are the labels I linked below. These are my recommended labels for, uh, I used to recommend them for Dymo because they're so cheap and they are now compatible with this Rolo printer. So this is currently what I'm recommending, but also two by one Rolo labels are great. So if you want to use those, if you can find those cheap somewhere, feel free to get the two by one. Uh, those are pretty good looking as well. We're going to make sure on my computer, this is portrait mode prints. Good. If it prints weird change from portrait to landscape mode, but for now select portrait mode, and then we're going to go ahead and do a label test. And so, it's time to feed the labels in. So all we're going to do is take this, make sure that these labels are face up. That means if you're going to peel it off, it's facing the ceiling and we are going to feed these in just like that. And it's going to do its magic and configure. Make sure you have a good amount of slack here. You give the roller the freedom to do what it wants and the light will turn green when it's ready and it already printed one label. We'll go ahead and do another test label just to make sure it's good. And as long as it's on there just like that, it's good. You can see it's a little bit off center. So what we can do is uh, just recenter it a little bit. You wanna make sure those tongs are nice and tight. Let's do an MF label. And this is looking nice and good. You can see all that matters for Amazon is that this barcode is scannable. But if you really want like a nice center, pretty label, be sure, you know, that there's no weird tension between the labels. Make sure it's feeding in smoothly. I can see there's a little bit of weird tension here. So we'll just click on this on the side, open this up, give it some breathing room, move it back. And then let it do its magic again. Make sure the label catches and we're good to go. This light, if it's ever flashing red, that means something is wrong. So it's currently flashing red. So we'll just click it again and we're good to go. By tapping it one time, it does the configuration. So we'll do one more test label and we're good to go. Beautiful label. You can see the conditions printed on there nice and center. It's a pretty label. So, oh, I forgot to mention before you do that, you're going to need, it's going to prompt you to download QZ tray. So when you click on printer settings or when you go to settings in general, somewhere it's going to say connect to QZ tray. This will even prompt when you try to create your first batch, you want to make sure that you download QZ tray. So as you see, it will have the option to download for Mac users or Windows users. If you're a Windows user, simply open this and we are going to make sure that we click on all the prompts here. You will get a message that says unable to establish connection with QZ. You can simply ignore that. Go ahead and open up this and we're just going to click everything. Yes. So install. Yes. Next. Install. 
We're just gonna keep going and it's going to install 100%. And now we're good to go. All we have to do is refresh this page here and it should show you the printer settings. Give it a second to connect to QZ tray and we are successful. So that is how you set up a Rolo printer with your go-to lister account. If you guys have any questions about that, go ahead. It depends on what type of issue you're having. If you know, I would reach out to Rolo support. Uh, if you're not even able to print a test label with the Rolo recommendations, go through those first two videos that Rolo recommends. And if it's not working, it's a Rolo issue. It's not a go-to lister issue. But if you get to this QZ tray part, and for whatever reason, it is not printing the label correctly. Again, double check that the label is between these two tongs and um, that you follow the instructions exactly when you were setting it up. Don't toggle anything. And uh, if, if you have issues with that, reach out to support at gotolister.com and we will do our best to help you out. But again, the most important thing you can do is ensure that your printer is completely set up 100% the way that Rolo recommends. So do go to rollo.com forward slash setup. Go through those first two videos. Come back and watch this video, you know, to see about how to configure it with GoToLister with QZ Tray. And if you have any issues at all, reach out to support at gotolister.com. Thank you so much.